This month we're going to be looking at this topic. Uh, actually, it's I think a month to the day that your first AP2 exam will be. It'll be the 2nd of September, I believe. Um, which maybe you're like, what? Already? Though, in my defense, you know, this thing has been sitting up here all year, right? And um, uh, here we are right now. There's the second. The actual period starts on the first, but our first math lesson that we missed is on the second. So I, I assume you'd have English or something like that. Who knows? Okay. So anyway, your draft timetable is, I think, in probably in my inbox actually. So it's coming. So this whole month, we're going to be looking at data and stats. Similar to the focus study on driving, we're going to go through all of these ideas together. So hopefully, you'll get the connections. So uh, collecting data, displaying and interpreting data. And then lastly, for the prelim course anyhow, summarizing data. Now, just like we did with the driving focus study, I just want to boil that down into some simpler language. So collecting data, first you want to get the data. That's the first thing you need to do. Secondly, once you've got that data, you want to be able to show it, and you also want to be able to read it if someone else is showing you data, right? So that's what display and interpreting means. Show it in some form, and there are lots and lots of different forms, and be able to read and interpret it as well. Know what it means. Uh, and first, lastly, summarize the data. So one of the tricky things about data is that there's so much of it you want to distill it down, because otherwise it's just incomprehensible. It's like, you know, I was just thinking last night about like, why? Why is it important that we look at this? I've alluded to the fact that um, two unit extension one students, they don't learn any of this, which is crazy. Good morning. Uh, which is why actually in the new services that they're discussing to launch in two years time, uh, they've put data and statistics into two unit and extension because they've realized that just like we're giving it to you, everyone really needs to know this stuff. Um, I thought of three big reasons why this is like really, really useful. Number one, this happens to be, I couldn't ask about a timing. This happens to be a census year. Uh, we've alluded to that before. So I think it's actually, yeah, it's a week, we're a week out from actually um, probably your parents will get it and they'll open up the big form and everyone has to do it at the same time on Tuesday. Um, oh, is it really? Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So, well, I don't know if you're going to be there when your parents are filling out the question. The last time I did it, it was a very, it's a fairly long process. There's a lot of questions to answer. So number one, it's timely. Number two, no matter what kind of job you have in the future, like all of the types of work you'll be doing will be involved with data in some way. Like you've got to understand times and money and people and all of the ways to sort of tie them up in a neat bow. And stats is the way we do that. Uh, and lastly, I just wanted to show you, even if your work doesn't involve data in a big way, um, you are constantly being presented with data. And so you need to be able to understand like how these, like what on earth these things mean. So if I pull out things like this, I've got a few examples. So these are two graphs that represent the same data, okay? We're actually gonna look, it's a specific some point under, uh, I think it's under DS2, to talk about misleading graphs. Now, both of these represent the same data, Look carefully, what's the difference between them? <laughs> scale. It's the scale, right? Now the fancy word for this, the fancy phrase, which I'll explain when we get to it, is called a truncated y-axis, okay? So have a look at these numbers, right? Have a look at these numbers. This starts from zero. That's generally where you expect the bottom of a graph to be, and then you go up, okay? But graphs frequently don't start from zero. They start from some number which whoever is giving you the data wants to choose to make this like convenient to convey. Oh my goodness, look at the interest rates. But actually, the changes are quite minute. This happens all the time. Um, and sports stats are really bad at this actually, because they just want to show you something and make it look interesting and like, oh wow, gee, that guy's not doing so well this year or three years ago. Um, so the way data is presented can be hugely deceptive, right? Here's another one. Uh, this is like a company, right? And this picture looks good, right? This looks like the company's doing okay. Um, except, again, I'm going to show you the same data but presented slightly differently. This is the same company and the same numbers. But maybe you're like, wait, how can one be going up and one be going down? I want you to look carefully and I want you to come back to this one and see what's the difference. Um, okay, so one word. 
cumulative, right? So this presents, okay, over time, how are things going if I add everything up? So this graph, it has to go up, at least you'd hope, right? So over time, it's increasing, but it kind of masks the fact that actually over time, um, the company is doing poorer and poorer and losing market share or whatever it is, okay? So again, same data, presented differently. Um, here's an interesting one. It takes a second to work out what on earth is going on here, right? Uh, this kind of looks good. It looks like um, gun deaths are decreasing, right? I don't know. Except they're not. Why not? The, upside the graph down. is upside down. <laughs> Zero is up the top. Zero is at the top. So in fact, the lower this graph goes, the more gun deaths there are. And you kind of look at the thing, wait, what's going on? They've tried to try, like say, oh yeah, so this is the red part. So it's sneaky, right? Yeah, exactly. This is why, it's not Mark Twain's quote, but it's sort of, uh, was popularized by him. That there are lies, damp lies, and statistics. People will always try and, um, you know, pull the wool over your eyes. Now, I've got um, a couple more interesting, this is just a funny one, okay? So, when you get presented with data, that um, is what we call correlating, right? So two sets of data, and they seem to be connected in some way. So this is actually a very famous example. So it's like, thanks a lot, Nicolas Cage. I blame you for all of the deaths by people falling no into a pool, okay? But now, see, so there is a correlation, loosely, but there's no causation, right? It's not like one causes the other, or Nicolas Cage is like, wow, lots of people are drowning in pools. I should really make some more films this year. There's no connection like that at all, right? So things like that. Um, this is a pretty important one. I'm going to draw out two things to you here, right? Um, climate change, yeah? There's this incredible culture of climate change deniers, and they'll look at a graph like this and say, global warming, what global warming, okay? Now, there are two significant problems with this. Uh, number one, the way the argument is being drawn that there is really global warming is this red line. Does anyone know what the red line's called? It's got a special name. Actually, kind of got two special names. Uh, probably the easiest special name is it's called a trend line. So it's like you've got lots of numbers, they're going up and down and up and down, but like what's the overall trend? Okay? So it looks like, yeah, things are going down. Except for the fact that this is actually not a trend line at all. How have they made this line? Look carefully, you can tell me how they, they worked out where it goes. Like <laughs> okay, so it's like, oh yeah, look, it's cold. clearly it's cold, right? Um, <laughs> so there's that fact up. All they've done, and it's, yeah, it should be a line of best fit, but it's not, because they've just joined the start point to the end point. Do you see that's all they've done, right? Now, it, just imagine, had I hit it this, this year over here, if I had started at 99 rather than 98, the line they would have drawn would be quite different, right? It would have gone from here upwards. Actually, the trend line or the line of best fit on this should be going up despite the fact that it starts at a particularly higher value, okay? This was really starting from 1998. Like yeah, the that's, so there's the other problem. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be, can you see that? Yeah. Good morning. Uh, ah, shoot. Okay, hold on a second. Let me try this. I'll do it this way. Uh, yeah, there we go. Is that better? You can see that? Okay. So, this shows you from going further back, like 99 to 98 is just around here, right? That's the data they were looking at. But when you look at a longer trend, it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is looking a little worse. And I could go further back as well. And people are going to argue back and forth about what this means. Okay, now the last one, I say the last one to, um, the best one to last. You could just go the Donald J. Trump approach <laughs> and tweet something like this. Now, just have a look at it. Just have a look at it for a second, okay? It's not immediately obvious what the problem is. There's maybe like, there's one which is kind of like, huh, what's going on? Um, for starters, what is this list of percentages? For one thing, it clearly doesn't add up to 100%, right? So there are some overlapping numbers that are kind of been confounded here, okay? So you're like, what, what is this list supposed to represent? And then you start to see, as you read the words more carefully, you're like, oh, there's blacks and then there's whites and then there's categories that clearly overlap. Like just because they're police, that doesn't mean they're not white or not black, what does that mean? Okay, so it's just confusing. And then more interestingly, there's this bit down the bottom, which obviously I'm not expecting you to know, but it says the sources from the Crime Statistics Bureau in San Francisco. The tiny little problem with that is there is no Crime Statistics Bureau in San Francisco. <laughs> one of the issues with this um, is that no one knows exactly where this data is coming. No one's been able to corroborate it. So it's almost like it's just been plain made up. Okay, now obviously, you look at this, you're just scrolling through it on your feed, and of course you're not going to go, it's like, oh, I better fact check this one, right? 
So therefore, statistics, this is something which is just going to be in your life and you need to be able to reckon with, okay? Which is why I think it's so cool that we're doing this. So, the very first item, and you can make a new subheading if you haven't already, the very first item we're looking at on a DS1, if you're going to collect data, well, the first thing you want to do is work out, well, how am I going to do this, okay? So the subheading is survey design. And there are going to be three kinds of um, questions or issues that we need to be aware of. And for this first one, I'm going to get you to... Um, in pairs or whatever, just kind of brainstorm a few. You guys have filled out surveys before, loads and loads and loads of them, or answered surveys. I'd like you to turn to the people around you and answer this question for me, just brainstorm a little bit. What kinds of questions can you ask? Or, or maybe, you know, what kinds of questions have you been asked? Emphasis on kinds, right? There's lots of different types of questions that will give you different kinds of data. So think about all the surveys you've ever answered and think about the questions you've been asked. They're not all the same, okay? So let me give you a tip. A multiple choice question is different to a question where you have to like provide a kind of response rather than select. So there you go. That's two broad categories I've already mentioned to you. Can I give you two, three minutes to talk to the people around you while I have a sip of this lovely looking hot chocolate? And then we'll come together with some answers.